Are you getting ready to start a compound in medicine and you have no idea what you're doing? So stick around because I'm going to help you. I'm Tiffany. I'm a physician assistant, but I'm also a GLP-1 advocate. So I help people get access to GLP-1s that can't get them through traditional insurance. So if that's something that you're struggling with, there are some links over here in my bio that hopefully can help you out. So when people are first starting out, I hear this a lot. They're either very afraid to get themselves an injection or they're really nervous about overdosing on the medication because they're very unsure of the whole drawing up the medicine and injecting it process. So I just want to do a video very quickly about that process and how that works step by step. So if you're an old pro, you don't need this video. Okay. You can keep scrolling, but this is more for people who are new to the process. Okay, just to orient yourself for this example, I'm gonna use bacteriostatic water. So this is just basically sterile water. Okay, this is not actual medicine, but it's gonna be the same difference. It's gonna come in the same kind of vial that you would get when you get compounded medications. So just FYI, this is not real medication. The other thing you're gonna see me use in this video is an insulin syringe, okay? And we call this an insulin syringe because for the most part, people use it to draw up insulin. This has got 100 marks on it okay and some of the marks are really tiny they're hard to see but they're marked off in units of 10 so you're gonna see um, and I'm gonna put a better picture here later because I know it's hard to see but they're marked off 10 20 30 40 50 60 etc all the way to 100 so 100 units is what this is it's a unit equals one milliliter okay so if you filled up this whole syringe this would be 100 units full or one milliliter right? What you're not seeing because it's still the cap on is this little tiny baby needle. It's so tiny. Oh my gosh. It's itty bitty. Now this is an insulin needle. So this uh, needle is not interchangeable. You can't take the needle off and on. So if you accidentally bend this needle, then you have to start over with a new one. Now some syringes, the needle comes on and off, but this one does not. Okay. Another important thing that I want to say is it's hard to screw this up, okay? Or it's hard to do something that you can't fix. So don't be nervous if you're not a medical person and you're worried about screwing up this medicine because I know that these are expensive and a lot of people think, oh my gosh, I don't wanna screw this up, but you're not going to, it's fine. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, when you get this, your vial should have a little part in the middle that looks like rubber, okay? That is what you're gonna put the needle into and you're gonna to try to hit the very center of it. So when you do that, you wanna go at like a 90 degree angle. All right, so I'm gonna turn this around so you can see. You also wanna have an alcohol swab. Oh, that's upside down, okay, an alcohol swab. And every single time that you poke this vial, you want to wipe off the top of it with an alcohol swab just to keep things good and sterile. Okay, so let's do this and I'm gonna show you the whole process. So I'm gonna take the vial, okay, I'm gonna use my alcohol swab and I'm going to do a little wipe here, okay, just quick. Then I'm gonna take my insulin syringe, all right, and I'm gonna take the cap off, pull it straight up, and then you can see the little tiny baby needle. All right, you're gonna take this, I'm gonna try to put this close so you can see it. You are going to insert it and you're gonna put it right there in the middle, okay? And you're gonna do kind of a 90 degree angle and you're gonna push it in. Now here is where you're not gonna mess up, but you're gonna try to turn the whole thing upside down and when you're doing it, you're gonna kind of keep it at a 90, well, kind of a straight angle here. Okay, when you do that, you're gonna turn it upside down and then you're going to pull back on this part right here. So this is kind of where it requires kind of the two hand situation. So you're gonna pull back and as you pull back on this and I'm pulling back on this plunger, you should feel like a little like tension. And when you do, you're gonna see medica medication pull into this syringe. Now, if you pull up too much medicine, no big deal. Just release it and push it back into the vial because this medicine is sterile. So if you, as long as you don't do anything else with it. You can push it, you can pull it back. Okay, so you're not gonna mess up. So actually a lot of the times when I'm pulling medicine back into a vial, or if I'm trying to pull it, what I'll do is I'll pull too much and I'll do that on purpose because there's always like a little bit of air in the top. Gosh, I know this is hard to see. And then, then I'll actually push it back and I'll push the air bubble out. So then uh, what I'll do is like, okay, let's say you're on 50 units. Let's say, so I'll pull it all the way back and I might pull it back to like 70, just, you know, just for an example, but then I'll pull it all the way back and then I will push it back up to 50 and make sure all the air bubbles are out. So that's kind of the way I like to do it. Then when we're ready, you want to hold it right there where, let's say in this example, we were doing 50 units. I'm going to hold it at 50. All right. And then I'm going to pull it straight out and then I'm ready. Right. So I've got, I've got 50 units here. And if I wish I could get this where you could see it better. So 50 is literally going to be right there on the 50. Now 
another important thing. If you're on a compounded medication, your provider should tell you exactly the number of units that you're on, okay? So now, in all likelihood, they'll also tell you how many milligrams that equals, but it is more important that they tell you the number of units you're gonna be on because you're gonna be doing it in these little syringes, and then you have to know the number of units. So if there's any question at all, you contact your provider and clarify with them how many units, okay? Don't ask your mom, don't ask somebody on the internet, don't ask a stranger, because this is where people mess up, and this is where people overdose themselves, and this is where I see people get sick, all right? So you need to clarify with your provider how many units that you take. In all likelihood, this is gonna change with your therapy because you're gonna start on a small number of units and then work your way up, all right? Now, everybody's units are gonna be different because your medicine is compounded differently. So I can't tell you how many milligrams you're on based on the number of units you're on because it all depends on the compounding of your medication. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, another little tip. So, you know, your medicine, usually you're gonna keep it in the fridge, but sometimes it hurts to inject a medication that's a little bit cold. So, if you want to draw it up and leave it out for about 30 minutes before you inject it, totally fine. It doesn't hurt to necessarily to inject a cold medication. Like, it might hurt a little bit more, but it doesn't necessarily um, hurt the effectiveness of the medication. But some people like to leave it out for about 30 minutes before they do the injection. Now, I'm gonna talk about injection sites in another video, okay, because there's a lot more to talk about. But if you're a newbie, this is one of the most intimidating parts. And I just want you to remember that you're not gonna screw it up, okay? It's fine. And even if you do mess it up, like, we can correct it. So this is so easy and something that uh, most 99.9% .9 of people can do, okay? So don't let the fear of this intimidate you into thinking that you cannot do a compounded GLP-1 because I can tell you right now you can, and if you need help walking through the process, I'm glad to help. So let me know if there's anything in this video that was not clear or you need more um, details on, and I'll be glad to do another video. All right, guys, y'all have a great day.